it's Scott here from Digital Puppets, and I thought I'd make this video because recently we set up a Discord channel for all you um, 2D motion capture animators out there and 3D motion capture animators, anyone who uses um, Unreal or iClone. Um, check the comments below and you'll see the link and whatnot. Anyway, um, a question that I keep seeing come up in Discord and also in the comments on our recent videos is asking me how I set up my advanced lip sync. Um, I know I've made these videos before but it's a bit all over the place because one video is about how to rig the mouth and then there's other videos about how I rig the whole character in a derby character animator and the information I suppose is a bit spread out all over the place. So this video is specifically just going to be how to create an advanced lip sync for your motion capture Adobe character animator character. I said the word character too many times there. Okay, right, so first of all, you can see this cartoon person <laughs> right in front of me. This was a VTuber, ToonTuber that we made for a client recently for TikTok. Um, a bit experimental, worked really well. It's a good uh, demonstration on just how quickly you can knock out animations using the Adobe Character Animator. Anyway, let's have a, as you can see at the moment, you know, as I'm talking, he's talking and it's not just cutting into single frame vitamins, you know, each of the vitamins are animating into shape and it gives it a much more advanced um, look that you might expect to see on a television grade program. So I'm just going to turn off the lip sync for a moment and I'm just going to find the mouth triggers. There you go. So just to give you a better look at how they animate. As you can see from the default, we're animating into the mouth. Right, so how do I do all this? Well, I'll try and show you as quickly as possible. First of all, it's all done in Adobe Animate. So, um, let's have a quick look. As you can see, this is my character setup. It's all broken down into layers. So, down here on the left hand side of the screen, you can see my folder, and there's a whole bunch of mouth shapes. So, uh oh, you know, all the vitamins and all the expressions I've done. I'm going to turn all these off for a second and just stick to the one. And I'll build the first one first. And what I'll do is normally I'll draw, you know, a line, and then I'll click on it, and then I'll press F8, and I'll turn it into a graphic and um, name it as a mouth. And then when I get in there, it's going to look something like this. So let's turn the mask off so you can see exactly what's going on. We've got the teeth, we've got the inside of the mouth, you got the tongue, and then you've got the top lip and the bottom lip. And all this is a combination of um, classic symbols. Classic symbols is anything which is, you know, a solid image which is just basically being shifted up and down like so these teeth they're not going to be moving you know they're solid um, so it's just being shifted up and down um, however the lips those are shapes so you can see here upper lower also the outer shape of the lips and so they are moving into shape there and then everything I want hidden inside of the mouth is in a folder underneath underneath the lips and this um, layer here is the masking layer so basically as you can see only what is inside this mask is going to be shown when it's applied and everything else is hidden underneath now to do that all you gotta do is create um, whatever you know shape or pen marking or whatever um brush marking and then you make that layer you right click it and you um collect select mask and then whatever is underneath will be the the mask will apply to so in this case as i say teeth tongue back of the mouth those are all applied and only what you can see within this mask area is going to be visible and it's as simple as that. Then when I've done that, I generally duplicate it 
So let's say if I wanted to make another mouth shape, um, I would duplicate that. I might call it E, and I'll hide that one. Very important to make sure you right click on it and duplicate the symbol. Otherwise, if you don't do that, any changes that you make to this, it's going to affect the previous one as well because effectively it's the same symbol. So you also need to duplicate the symbol so that you can make changes to it. So you duplicate the symbol, and then I'm going to call this E sample because I've already got an E1 in. Double click on it. And for an E mouth shape, like the A ah, is open wide, but for the E one, I probably want to keep them teeth closer. And obviously, the lips don't look right there, so I'm going to select that. Select that one as well. And I'm going to reshape it to that. And this mustache, how does that go? Yeah, I think that's all right. Right, so what I need to do then is I just need to go in and adjust this. Find that first layer. I'm going to clear these, clear keyframe, make sure that's a shape. Make sure it's got the same tween applied. So as we can see the tween here is cubic ease out. So the mask I'm also going to make sure is cubic ease out. Now you might be thinking why were all of those single frame before? Because sometimes, not always, but sometimes um, when you have a tween on it kind of the masking disappears it doesn't apply for whatever reason someone might have a solution to that i don't know but if that ever does happen all you need to do once you've got the mask doing what you want it to do select them frames make them individual and then there's no issue so anyway that is just a quick example of how you can tweak um different symbols so that you can make a collection of them you don't have to keep rebuilding it from scratch and as you see if i go back to a that's still the same as it was right so once you've got that all you're going to do is um make sure everything is turned off apart from the layer that you want and then you're going to export as a movie file and as a ping sequence so that it's um, the rest of it is transparent and then you are going to bring that into your um, Photoshop cell. So let's go back to Adobe Character Animator. Right, so you've got your animated ping sequence. What do you do next? Right, well, to get that working like this, testing, testing, one, two, three, um, you've got to first get it rigged into your Photoshop um, setup. And I do use Photoshop instead of Illustrator because if you, you know what, I'm not going to get into it now. Um, I'm just going to say it's much easier to set it up in Photoshop. Loads of reasons. I'll discuss that another day. Anyway, so let's have a look at this character. Right, what um, layer is he? Do, 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 do. Number two, three. So where is it? There we go. Um, I've got different versions of this character. Oh, um, five one is full body and turned and whatnot. Anyway, this is my reaction video setup version for this character where you can see he's looking at his phone right so anyway we click on that i'm going to press um, ps and it's going to open up my photoshop master file right let's have a look so over here on the right hand side of the screen you can see my folders so in the first folder you've got the um, main puppet file and then we've got the right arm and the left arm and that because they're positioned in front of the face and the body um, but anyway we want to look at the head so let's turn all this off and get straight to what we want which is the mouth mouth is independent because I've got parallax and I want it to move around the face and what you do is you create all your folders 
and then in the folders you're gonna place your ping sequence um, the way to best bring it in is open up a folder like this and find where you've got um, your PNG sequence and literally just um, here this is just an example so I'm just gonna put E folder make sure you've got a layer opened up and then all you gotta do first of all just make sure you're zoomed out and you're not zoomed in because if you zoomed in it can mess it up but then you just drag it drop it in press enter for each frame and you can see this dropped in now this very first frame is the default frame so we don't need that make sure to select them and normally I rasterize them because it will bring it in as a smart layer and that's it then you just press save and then you go back to Adobe Creator Animator and when you come back into Adobe Creator Animator you'll see that it will be uploading um, the new layers that you saved I'll pause this for a second and then what you're going to want to do is go into a rig mode and what you're going to see there is the layers that you've brought in in this case you can see the email on top but right, so let's just find where we had it All right so mouth and you can see this is the sample e and you'll notice there's no icon next to it there that means it's not got any bad um, behaviors added to it and it's not added to any triggers or anything but right, now this is going to be a visiting so you're going to want to make sure that over on the left hand side of the screen it is tagged as the visiting you want it to be in this case it's an e so we want it tagged as an e and then all you need to do is go down go to behaviors go to cycle layers and in my case it runs um, bottom to top so it's going two three four five six from the bottom upwards so I'm going to change the layer order from bottom to top yours might be in the other direction just make sure you got it in the right way um, when triggered and then we're going to want it on hold on the last layer but not forward and reverse for your visimins um, for your lip syncing because I'll explain in a second the other thing you gotta do as well is on trigger end so basically when I stop making the E sound I want it to stop immediately now the reason for that is and you'll see there it's already taken out the forward and reverse option anyway now the reason for that is that when you're talking you're talking very fast and you're making lots of visimins very quickly if the animation has to reverse out of the cycle layer so animates into the E and animate out of the E by the time it's animating out of the E you've already gone on to make the A, F, L you know and you would just mess it all up it needs to be able to cut off immediately and move straight on to the next visiting and that's it and then I'm going to um, I'm going to delete that because obviously I just set that up as an example and I've already got my E1 set up and then you do that for all your visimins and then when you come back into Adobe Character Animator you make sure you've got your microphone turned on and yeah it should look something like this testing testing a one two three testing testing at one two three uh, a couple of other questions I've been asked in regards to lip syncing which I'll just cover quickly is why do I only use why do I use six frames is this the optimum amount I find this to be the average best um, and it's not really six it's um, five because as you can see this first frame is the default and that isn't new so it's frame two to six so it's five frames and I normally for my visimins I always use the ease out in Adobe animate and you'll see that it oops, hang on, it very quickly animates into the mouth shape so straight away early on 
you can see that's going to be an E and then it's just a bit more of a flourish. What we don't want is to slowly animate into it because what would happen there, it would take longer for it to animate into the mouth. But as you're talking, you might only actually see two frames of the animation. And if the first two frames look more like that, then it's no good. Um, and the other reason is that in Adobe Character Animator, when you do a full facial expression and you make a trigger, so let's see if I can find where those are. Right, so expressions. You can see here that in that expression we've got um, the mouth being triggered, the eyelids being triggered and the eyebrows being triggered. The reason I picked five because not only is it an optimum amount but all of these need to be the same amount of frames each. If one's five and then you had like a slow um, mouth tween like which was ten, what would happen is the other layers that only have five um, layers in them and five frames in them, that would disappear while your mouth is still cycling through the additional frames. So everything needs to have the same amount of layers. And personally, after making a whole bunch of these puppets, I find that five frames seems to be the optimal amount. However, if you do want to have additional frames for the mouth and only use less frames for the eyes, um, you can set up a replay trigger instead. I'll not go into that now, but I have made um, tutorial videos before about how to set up replays. So just look back on my YouTube videos and you'll see somewhere along there um, a replay trigger video. In fact, I'll try and tag it into the end of this just in case you want to know how to do that. Anyway, that's it. That is how I set up my advanced lip syncs. If you have any questions, if you feel I missed anything out, just put a comment below and I will get back to you ASAP. Or if you want to ask me any other questions, why don't you join our Discord channel? We're building up quite a big community on there. Just come on, ask any questions and me, my brother or many of the other people in the group as well will be happy to help. So thanks for watching and see you later.